but I, I guess the go-betweens are considered by many to be like the the pinnacle of, of this uh, theme. But I'll, I'll go into that a little bit when we cover. But uh, yeah, so what'd you think? Oh man, another another strong album this week. Yeah. Probably my second second favorite after the EPMD. I mean, it, it is my second favorite after the EPMD. And and what I love about it is it is well, a it's good all the way through. Every track is is pretty pretty solid. There's not really a weak a weak track on here. They do some different things. Um, I think they are a four piece band, but a violin features prominently, um, which is unusual for the type of uh, albums that we listen to up to this point. It's kind of like the Pogues a little bit, right? Like the instrumentation is is pieces of it. Uh, sort of. I mean, the Pogues are definitely like more pub rock, you know, kind of that. Sure. Irish yep. ballad or yeah, Irish ballad type of um, Celtic sound this and this isn't like that they this this is definitely like a precursor to to a lot of indie rock and alt rock to come i mean i think they are definitely well other piece. And, and antecedent of, of yes. other stuff for sure yeah but they're definitely of a piece with like that college rock sound the rem type of sound there's a little jangle guitar on this i would say um there is uh i felt like it sounded like the um like the late 2000s and early 2010s had a ton of bands yeah. that sounded like this. I think of, uh, were you with it when we went to go see that band San Cisco that opened for somebody? Like I, th- there's yes. that band and there's just a lot of these, the, the kooks and, and like st- there's a, just a lot of bands that have that like groove vibe that I yep. heard all over this. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a little like Beach Boys-esque quality to the sound as well. Um, not with like, there's not a lot of harmonizing or anything like that, but there is kind of like a, I don't know, not a, what is it? It's like a surf rock vibe, sort of. They also reminded me of Prefab Sprout and Orange yes. Juice and kind of those type of Definitely Prefab mood, Sprout, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or vibe again. And um, the other thing that was kind of stood out is the use of harmonica, which is pretty, um, you know, comes comes in in a couple of songs like quiet heart and um, one of the other ones, I think it's basic. This is also acoustic guitar driven as opposed to electric guitar. Um, There is a female backing singer um, or, you know, uh, no, she's a band member. Yeah. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. what I meant. But she's, uh, she sings backing vocals. She, I think she's the violin player. Um, So that, that kind of, you know, it's fronted by a male, you know, lead singer, but she features prominently in the, in the backing vocals. Well, let's give well. some, let's give some, uh, some names here yeah, of, of band members. So we've got, uh, Robert Forster and Grant McLennan. They are considered to be the two, the heart and soul, so to speak of the band, um, okay. in terms of songwriting and stuff like that. Um, they, uh, for their debut album, they picked up a drummer, Lindy Morrison, um, who becomes their drummer. Um, and those are considered to be sort of the the staple members uh, of the band. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a variety of other folks. Um, and I'm kind of doing my research as we speak. I didn't do it directly on here. So as you continue with your thought, I will add in bits and pieces. So. Yeah, but it's got a, it's kind of got this, you know, um, Americana vibe to it as well, or sound. Um, there's some Spanish guitar, um, and uh, in, in the opening track, "Love Goes On," uh, horns come in at times as well, which is an, another kind of uh, unusual thing that happens in in a an album like this. Um, that you know, we have horns have come in in other albums, but maybe not with kind of the alt rock vibe to them. And Amanda Brown is the background singer and the string arranger and play. Yep. So just so you know, that's the, yep. The feet, the fourth piece. And, and I think lyrically too, I think this album uh, works really well. I think there's, it's more of that literate kind of uh, song structure and, um, very and, uh, sincere, I'd yes. say, is the lyrics. Yep. Yep. And yeah, definitely of a piece with um with uh who did the George Best? See, I'm already forgetting. 
wedding present. Val- yeah, wedding present. I would say the lyrics are kind of a- akin to that. Um, well, let me give you another one that I wrote down that as I'm doing my research here, I'm laughing because it comes up quite a bit. Okay. And uh, I wrote I wrote down, reminds me of the modern lovers. And oh, yeah. like definitely it comes up a lot. So my ear is getting better at drawing yeah. connections without being led there. And that would be another touch point, I'd say, Yep. in terms of bands. And it's the other interesting thing that I found was I could tell, you know, I didn't look up uh, about the album other than the track listing at a time, but there's, you know, those times when you're listening to an album and you can tell what the single is right away. <laughs> I felt oh, like well, I... yeah, that's a, it's a no doubt or what the, right. I mean, there, there are a lot of great songs on this album, but there's one like ridiculously great song on this album. Almost yeah. from the opening notes. It's so yes. weird how you can like pick that pick that out when well and it's also a song music. i know like okay. it's funny it's like i knew the song but i didn't know like its name or who it was by but as soon as it came on i knew it because i've heard it a bunch of times but like i just i don't know why but it just never was like who is this oh the go between you know what i mean but yeah. i immediately well and do you want to share what the song is because i'm yes. a thousand percent <laughs> confident we have the same song yes, yes. it's streets of your town yes and mm-hmm. i don't think i had heard the song before but it's so like catchy that i'm surprised it it's probably played somewhere along the way um i mean it's a perfect song for a movie i mean god the chorus is like undeniable because the the male vocals are fantastic and then there's this like great harmony yep um and and just it's a very traditional you know rock song right with like the you know the chorus the bridge the you know it's got it's basically it's by book and i mean this in the best way possible it's like a by the book song you know even time wise and stuff but um boy it just really hits the combination of of the music and uh the the different voices and the harmonies it just the chef's kiss it is a is the definition of an earworm and like kind of Mm -hmm. a perfect pop song um it fell into the as I listened to the album both times, I replayed it, which is not something I do often. <laughs> but I'm like, ah, that's that song so short and so enjoyable. I'm gonna play that song again. So yep. yeah, yeah. The interplay between all of the members of the band is is really great. I I really like the use of um, the acoustic guitar with the violin. That works really well on this album. And um, I had not heard of this band before. And um, yeah, it was just it's just going to be high on my rankings again. Um, it, it just really jumped up there. It sounds, you know, it doesn't sound of 1988 or 87, whenever it came out. 88. No, yeah. And that, that prefab sprout comparison was excellent. And I think the modern lovers one is another one that if you're familiar with either of those two and you like them, like this will be, a, yeah. did you say orange juice? That's another good one that yeah. it sounds like that. Yeah. Although Prefab Sprout, we all agreed, were, we were kind of befuddled by a little bit, even though we kind of liked it. This I feel yes. stronger about in terms of Oh, this I like enjoyment. the meeting. You're right. Yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah, that one. I think we all were like, it's all three of us were like, it's hard to put my finger on this because yes. this one, well, first of all, Matt's not here, but I'm very confident saying Matt will love this album. Like right. I. Do you have any <laughs> doubt? I mean, this no. is like great right no, in no, his no. window. So I have a feeling he's going to be like, you know, not only would he like it, but he's like, I sent a text to my brother to tell him to listen to this album or were you familiar with it? So um, I feel comfortable saying if you're wondering what Matt's take on the albums are this week, he, he the one I'm sure of is he'll like this. So. Well, I this this band is good enough. This album is good enough that this could appeal to a wide variety of people. I feel like um, Ooh, it's definitely you know two other artists that they, they keep mentioning that they they put in the same lane here that I didn't get to, but I'd be interested to hear your take. Nick Drake and Elvis Costello. Now, Nick Drake, I didn't hear at all, but I guess he writes, they write similar songs in terms of content to what Nick Drake writes, but sonically I did not see it. So that's an interesting one. Elvis Costello, I get a little, but once again, more like what the songs are about. Like, you know, sentimental love songs right it's kind of yeah yeah elvis costello has much more i think range or at least interest in terms of what he is drawing on in terms of his music um and maybe but he this has a lot of stuff though with the strings and the 
and it's, it's, it's it doesn't stay in one lane i guess what i'm saying like there's no kind of like ska two-tone type of thing here well yeah he but that, he you know plays on sometimes and yeah well he does punk and 50s right. rock and a variety of stuff but exactly yeah. but yeah i mean that's i like elvis costello more but this is for a band i've never heard of this is is really good um and a, a real find so it's it's a strong recommend for me yeah a couple other tracks that i really liked was um track eight was there anything i could do was a song i loved quiet mm. heart the second track is uh, as is the first track love goes on um but as you said there there really aren't duds or songs so I was like, no. uh, and it's that's why it's so interesting to me that on spotify there's such a wild range of plays now obviously <laughs> streets of your town has the most but then some others had a ton and then some had barely any and i'm like these tracks are not markedly worse than no. the ones that have more plays and so it's surprising to me that um there'd be such a disparity between say clouds at four hundred sixty thousand plays and quiet heart at 1.17 million you know that to me they're very comparable songs so right yeah to the mm -hmm. point where i one of the times i listened to this i was like where is this album drop off and i didn't it didn't so yeah. <laughs> um yeah that's always a good sign can't I mean. fucking argue with post-punk flashcards man they really no. they they Kudo, I, I'm going to have to look up who made these things and just give them a tip of the cap because they, yeah. Maybe yeah. CTS influencers category. <laughs> <all day>. what, <laughs> so. Um, so did you find out anything more about why they're like the most best Australian band or so, kind of where uh, that comes from? So right now, yeah, I did a little bit of research, but I, what I did for, for now, I was kind of synthesizing it with, the reads and going in from different sources. I went mm -hmm. to my normal ones, right? Like Google searches of contemporary articles about them, you yep. know, so your, your NMEs, your melody maker, your spin, Rolling Stone, stuff like that. And there was some stuff there. And then I, I, I all music, right. The, the cursory Wikipedia look along with links attached to it, right. Clicking on that are interesting. Yeah. Uh, but I, so I kind of synthesized all of it, but right now I'll go to, for the sake of simplicity, I'll go to all music, but um, they, um, I think it was kind of like they had the kinks thing going a little bit mm, that okay. like in that they wrote about what were considered to be Australian themes. And, and then they also had a thing where they gigged incessantly in Australia. So they okay. became sort of like well known as a truly Australian in a way that maybe like in excess, right? Like because they had worldwide fame, maybe didn't. You know, and they had an every man thing that maybe Midnight Oil, you know, being so lofty in their ideas, yeah, kind of you couldn't. You, they sort of were like the bands you could see at a pub, but also who wrote otherworldly songs. I, yeah. I, I guess another thing you compare them to is sort of like they were much more successful commercially in Australia mm -hmm. than Big Star was in America, but sort of that Big Star lane too, where they're creating this stuff for passionate fans, but also sort of flying under the radar a little bit. Uh, they have the Beatles thing where it's a pair of songwriters mm. and to the point where like they, they grew up as teenagers and they listen, they, they kind of said like Dylan velvet underground CCR, like you know, Beatles, right? Like the kind of the, the, the quad, the quad of whoever, I think the birds was another influence mm. for them, which you mm. can hear definitely for sure. But I think that's really what it was. Um, uh, they also later on, interestingly enough, they re after breaking up, they reunited in um, uh, 2000 because they kind of broke up at the end of the 80s. Uh, okay. Actually, not too far after this album, they did another album broke up. So maybe it was more like 1990, but around then. But they actually reunited in 2000 and they released an album. Um, and it also featured uh, uh, all the members of Slater Kinney, which I thought was oh. really interesting. So that would be an interesting follow up listen for all of us, you know, considering that we all like yeah. it. And unfortunately, uh, McLennan, uh, died in 2006. Um, okay. he was kind of like the, one of the songwriting engines. So unfortunately when he passed away, they were about to go tour and kind of do phase three of their mm. career, but, uh, it was not to be, unfortunately. So, um, they even have a little bit of a tragic, um, aspect to them. So, yeah. So yeah, that, I didn't do a super great job, but yeah, they were around from uh, 
19 their original run was from 1977 um and their first album was released in 81 and then after this one this was their last album before that 2000 album yeah and they broke up around 89 90 ish you know it's it wasn't like a formal thing as much as it just sort of dissolved right so this mm -hmm. album was released and then uh it was game over pretty much hmm. so until 2000 so uh yeah and uh when they released this album uh to give you an idea grant mclennan was born in 1958 and this album came out in 88 so he would have been 30 years old when this dropped so um you know still relatively young man um and doing it and um robert forster was born in 1957 so he would have been uh, 31 when this album dropped so okay yeah that gives you an idea hmm. where they're at career-wise so yep but once yeah thumbs up for me um yeah definitely it's hard for me to say which one was my favorite or not this week but uh i think i might have liked this one more than i liked the chameleons album kind of hard to compare it to the other two because they're different lanes so i, I yep. kind of won't directly draw for that but i like this one a little bit more than i like the chameleons one um from a comparative standpoint yeah yeah i agree it's yeah it's it's different than epmd so i mean it's different genre but but um in terms of quality i would say it's 